Hello? Can everybody hear me? It's not okay. unmuted. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Can you, can good. You yeah, I can hear you. I can hear okay. you perfectly. Um, Alan will moderate. The, Alan is the anchor for today's uh, session, so he will guide us briefly. So, but usually we know our people, and uh, we want to beg that we should give three more minutes. Alan, please, just three more minutes uh, at exactly five five minutes past five, or you can. Uh, you can direct so you can start. Thank you. Okay, sure. Yeah. So good evening, and then we'll be asking you a lot of questions for the refund and then the calculation, but all the same, you yeah. know, we'll try our best and then explain to them as you mm -hmm. have someone's uh, land, mm -hmm. you need to respect the tax system over, over, over there. So yeah. I think one thing that I can also offer is that maybe after the meeting, you can also still like maintain the google sheet so if yeah. anybody has like uh things peculiar. To, yeah peculiar to their own case they can leave a message there so it's not going to be on any webinar or talk so once you share with me maybe weekly or in two weeks i can go over the questions and like give them written answers so you can just give it to the person directly yeah that, that, that would be nice that would be nice so that we can at least like solve a lot of people's problem but actually taxation in estonia is quite I would say simple because of the way it's being calculated. It's just for you to understand the nitty gritty and that's all. I mean, things are not as complicated as other part of the world where you just cannot do it yourself. You need a tax professional. But in Estonia, you just need to know what is what so that you understand what is being deducted and what is being added. So, but I think uh, it should be five or five yeah, it's right now. Five, five now. So uh, I think uh, we have like people that have joined so we can start now. Okay. Okay, so first of all, I will, like I said, this this is this is an overview of taxation in Estonia. Nobody's going well, to become... do the introduction so that people ah, okay. know you as uh, they don't know you. They only yeah. see the face and then <laughs> see the yeah flyer. yeah yeah. So, uh, tomorrow when they meet you somewhere, they can just call you by name and then uh, with maybe the background. So that mm -hmm. um, today we have uh, is it for Russia, Femi? Is that right? Yeah, for Lawrence Femi, correct. For Lawrence Femi, uh, who is a strategic manager and a business analyst. Uh, today, we want to explain uh, the taxation system in Estonia for us. And, and because people are talking about refund, so we have the privilege to invite one of our brother who have got an in-depth knowledge of uh, tax and then how the system operates to explain to us. So uh, without uh, wasting much time, we have like one hour, but we spent like seven minutes of our one hour. So I'll just hand over the board to my guest. And I am Alan Scott, the general secretary for RC to host this program. So Femi, for, or Femi, you can just call him Femi, which is okay with that. And whatever questions that you have, you can just drop in in the chat box and then we'll take it from there. Uh, anything that you feel that we didn't explain or we didn't answer, so you can just draw our attention to that to answer your question for you. We want everybody to feel at home. We want everybody to feel happy with uh, the tax and then the tax refund. So please um, drop your questions. Those that have dropped their questions will just start be answering the question. But it will start with the overview for you to understand and the tax system in Estonia. And as you are in someone's land, you need to respect the tax and how the tax is being operated and how it's being calculated. That is one thing people don't take it serious. And if you don't take tax serious, it can lead you somewhere. So without me wasting much time, I hand over to Femi. So Femi, your members are listening to you. So um, good evening, everybody. So like I was explaining before, tax in Estonia is quite simple or generally taxation. And this webinar, it's for one hour. It's going to be very important for me to let you know that after one hour, you will not be an expert in taxation. But it's yeah. always good that you understand the basics of anything that you are doing. And from these basics, you can always build further knowledge. So in explaining this, I'm going to be sharing my screen and we'll go through a slide. It's just six pages. After that, 
we will do some explanation and I will show you how to calculate using real figures. And then we will go to the questions that have been submitted before now. And if we still have time, we can go through questions that you have also right away if we have time. So right now I'm going to share my screen and go through the slide. I think you disabled uh, participant screen sharing. So you have to change that in the settings. So I'm having a pop-up like, oh, disabled participant screen sharing. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, Danny, are you there? Can you enable him so that I can share the screen? Again, try again. Yeah. Yeah, I can right now. Yep. So I'm just going to go through the PowerPoint from the beginning. I hope everybody can see my screen right now. So um, yeah. taxation in Estonia, when, what, and how? I don't want to waste so much time on the slides, but uh, we'll try as much as possible to explain so that we quite maximize our time. So there are different types of tax in Estonia. And these I will see are the major ones. There are also some little little other stacks on investment and stuff but mainly for people on this group and what and the questions that i've been getting these are the major ones that i think that people want to know and that is really bordering on our daily life so we have the social tax the income tax the company income tax and the contribution to majority pay, funded pension and the unemployment insurance premium so starting from the top the social tax this tax is actually paid by the employer as long as you're earning above minimum wage. So that means if you're working in a company and you earn above the 525 euros minimum wage, the company is responsible for paying the social tax. And the income tax is the tax on your income, taking away your, um, what you call it, um, tax um, like minimum allowance. So, but it might look really rough now, when we get to the figures, you will understand better. And company income tax, so if you have a company, and when I mean company, I mean OU, not fear now. Of course, a lot of people regard fear as company. Of course, it's a company, but it's not like a full-fledged company because it's a sole proprietorship, which means that you are basically still operating as yourself in the business. So you are the business, the business is you in fear. But the company income tax I'm referring to now is the OU, which is like a separate entity on its own. And the contributions to majority funded pension is also taken away and added to your pension funds and also the unemployment insurance premium you know that usually when you're unemployed for a particular period of time the government is responsible for you these funds are part of the funds that are channeled into such uh, like funds for unemployment so the tax season starts february 15 as we know and it ends april 30 and if you don't know if you file your tax on february 16 17 18 you can still adjust the figure up until april 30. So if for any reason you feel, you feel you made a mistake or there was some error in your figures, you can always recalculate your tax. You can even do it that if you calculate your tax now and you get a refund of say 800 euros, already this money is paid into your bank account, you can still adjust the figure. What will happen is that you will just get a counter invoice to pay back that money that you have received. So if you have filled your tax already and you feel like, oh, I made a mistake, oh, I didn't put this, oh, I was supposed to add this, you can still amend it. Even if they've paid you your tax refund, you can still do it. So we will start from the employee, which is quite easy. So employee, I mean, you're working in a company, you're earning, let's say 600 euros, which is above the minimum wage. So what are the kind of taxes you have to pay? And so that when it's deducted from your income, while you are filing your tax, you understand it. So the one above here is tax with held. This one is going to be paid by you. So the contribution to mandatory funded pension is 2% of your income. That's by the law. It doesn't change per person. So whether I'm earning 600 or I'm earning 5,000, I'm earning 3,000, it's 2%. And the unemployment insurance premium is 1.6%. And the income tax is 20%. Remember I told you that if you are earning above the minimum wage, the company or the employer is responsible for your social tax. That's where you see this down part, taxes paid by the employer. So the employer is responsible for unemployment insurance premium, which is 0.8% of your total income. You are not the one paying that. And the employer is also responsible to pay the social tax, which is 33% of your income but note you must be earning above the minimum wage for your employer to be responsible for this social tax so if you are earning like 300 from a particular company 
or let's say you have like six different jobs. If all of them are paying 350, 400, 250, none of them is responsible for your social tax. You have to earn above the minimum wage for them to pay. Also, it's quite noteworthy that three, five employers are not responsible for your social tax. So that means if you are working in a company and you earn 600 euros somewhere, you work in another place, you earn 700 euros somewhere, only one will be paying the social tax. So it's not like you work in five places and then above minimum wage and all of them have to pay the social tax on your income. So this is for employee. And while filing the tax, it's quite easy. I might try to open the MTA page so that you will see. The good thing about taxation in Estonia is that everything has been filled in. So how much you earn, your expenses, your deduction, everything has been filled in already. So all you just need to do is go through the figure and see that, oh, it's correct, oh, it's correct, oh, it's correct, oh, this is wrong. And if there's anything, you can probably contact your employer or contact uh, you no know, tax board. But usually everything is always correct. And then you just proceed and end it. That's all. I will open an empty page and you will understand better. Sorry for the noise. I have a son. <laughs> so that's for the employee. Like I said, it's quite simple. These are just the calculations that you have to pay. If it's above minimum wage, you will just take away your income tax, your unemployment insurance, and your contribution to mandatory funded pension, which is 2%. And the employer is responsible for the 8% on unemployment insurance premium and 33%, which is the social tax. Also, I will explain in, in, in a situation where you have 1,000 euros as your salary, that's your total salary before tax, 1,000 euros as your total salary. So the employer is already responsible to pay 33% of that money as your social tax. But for you, what is the implication in tax? The implication in tax for you is that first of all, you have 500 euros tax exemption. So 1,000 euros minus 500 gives you 500 euros. So on this 500 euros is where all these taxes will be deducted. This 2%, this 1.6% and this 20%. So you are not being charged on your total tax of 1,000, on your total income of 1,000, but you will take away the exemption before the taxes are taxed for the exemption. That's how the exemption works. So let's uh, move on from the employee and the fear, which I think most people are into. So like I said, fear is so proprietorship. It's a company, people call it a company, but it's just you in a legal form. So it remains you, the assets and liabilities of the company, it's entirely on you. It's not like a full fledged company. So how do I find my tax as, as a sole proprietorship? So also note, like I said, this uh, one hour webinar will not be enough for us to cover all the entire scenarios that is possible in tax, because for some reason, some people are working and they also have a fear. Some people will work at some points, close the fear, start the fear. So like, the old um, tax, system is different per situation. So if I had a job paying my social tax, the way I will, I will be doing my tax for fear is different. Not so different, but the thing is that now I won't be responsible for the social tax because the company is paying it and the tax board will not be sending me invo invoice to pay for social tax. But now we will assume that this person in this scenario is a fear and fear only. So let's say, this is how the calculation goes. Your total income minus your total expenses is called gross profit. So let's say in a year, your total income is actually 25,000 euros. I think I made the calculation in the next slide. So let me just go through this uh, written one. So total income minus total expenses is your gross profit and your gross profit minus the social tax, which is still at 3%. It doesn't matter if you are fear or you are an employer, the rate is the same. So your gross profit minus the social tax gives you the gross profit after social tax which is GPAST, just, this is just for you to understand. It's not written in the tax uh, board. You might probably not find GPAST. This is just for us to understand. So your gross profit after tax minus deduction and allowances. Like I said, all these are already pre-calculated in the tax board. So uh, that went away. So the deduction allowances could usually include the deductions on payment of tuition, dependent children, dependent relative. There's a whole lot of things that gives you deduction as a person. So for example, if you are a student, I'm not a student. You get deduction based on tuition you paid for the year. I don't get the same. So I don't get the same. So that makes it different. So that means you should not like outrightly compare the tax of your friend to yourself. So there are so many things that could be different based on being a student, having a family and all those kind of things. So the deduction allowance are always pre-calculated as well because there are statutory figures to each one. So if you pay tuition, there's a figure that will be deducted. It doesn't matter what school you paid the tuition into. So let's move on. So your gross profit after social tax minus deduction and allowances. These allowances also includes the 500 
allowance on tax per month. So for a year, that means you have 6,000 euros already in a year as allowance, which is the 500 times 12. So for a salary now, you know, we are calculating their tax on a monthly basis. But for you as a fee now, who is reporting your tax in the year? So you will also have that 500 basic allowance, but it will now be times 12. So which will be 6,000. So your gross profit after social tax money deduction and these allowances will give you your gross profit after deductions. So your gross profit after deductions minus income tax, which is 20%, will give you the net profit, which is the money that is yours. So like I said, note, there is a 500 euro tax exemption per month. So I will also share this slide. This link has all these rates that I've mentioned because one hour is definitely not enough if I want to go through all the rate of deduction on education, dependent, relative, and all of these things. It's a really long list. So I actually included the link in the slide. So personally, you can go through it and see which one actually like, you know, pertains to you or which one like, you know, borders on your own condition. So. So let's go forward to OU. So some people also have OU. So OU, like I said, it's the full flare company. So OU, it's a company that it's itself. It's not dependent on the owner. Of course, there are shareholders and their owners are CEOs, but OU is dependent on itself. And for you to have an OU, you cannot use your personal bank account like you do in FIA. So if you have FIA, what you have is, let's say my name is Smith Charles. So it's FIA Smith Charles. But in OU, you have to register a company name and open a bank account on the company name. So that means the company is not you. Luckily in Estonia, Estonia has zero company income tax. So what it means is that if you open, if you operate on OU, if you don't take profit, if you don't pay salaries, if you don't take money for all these kind of things, you don't pay tax. So if all you do is offer your service, run your expenses, you don't pay any tax on your OU. But the moment you want to pay yourself salary or dividends or just take any money for personal gains. You have to pay the same tax as, as somebody who is employed. Because like I said, the OU, it's an individual body. If you as the owner wants to take money as salary, you will have to do the tax according to maybe transfer wise paying one of its employee. Because you as the owner is regarded as an employee who is being paid salary. So all the tax will have to go through the whole scenario of the income tax and the social tax. So the, the company, your OU will be responsible for the social tax you are paying on the amount if it's more than the minimum wage. So because like I said, the OU, it's a separate uh, body. So I said tax is only calculated on the basis of salaries paid and dividend issued to shareholders. This salary also follows the same as regular employer to employee relationship. However, taxes have to be filed yearly to show the income and expenditure of the company. So for example, if you were running an OU, which a lot of people do, and you never took salary, you never paid anything, it's very, very possible. So some people are actually running OU and it's like part-time business and income keeps coming, but they don't spend it for some reason. There are lots of people who do that. You don't have to pay any taxes, but you still have to file your taxes and declare all your income and expenditures. These expenditures could also be purchase of capital assets. So your OU can buy a car, can buy anything, but you know that whenever you are buying those assets, it has to be registered under the OU. So the name of the owner of the car will be the company and not you. So just to put that in, if you run an OU and you're purchasing a car, a house, or uh, land, whatever, any asset it could be, you have to buy the house in the name of the OU. That is when you will not be paying taxes on such money. So a lot of people also make that mistake that they have OU and they go and buy a car and then they put their name, Smith Charles. That car is yours. It's not for the company. So it means that that money you took will be taken as if you took profit or you took salary. So you have to pay all the taxes on that money. Any asset bought for the OU has to be registered in the OU before you can you know, be tax exempted for it. So I said, if no salary or dividend was withdrawn from the OU, no tax is to be paid to the government. This is an exemption of value added tax if added to invoices reissued to clients and customers. So value added tax is another thing on its own. It has its benefit and it has its calculation and stuff. So sometimes you receive invoice and you see VAT value added tax, it's added to it and you pay. This money is actually remitted to the government, but it's a whole different thing entirely. Not everybody who has OU has VAT as if there are, there are benefits to it, maybe in some other webinars, or if I can create my own personal presentation, I can share with you what is value added tax, I box, what are the benefits and stuff. But one hour is definitely not enough to dive into value added tax. Sorry, uh, sorry to cut you short. Are you recording this? Maybe you can post the video later. Yeah, I think they are. It should recording from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, we have. It's, it's been recorded. So at the end of the, okay. we'll just put it on the main page. Okay, so it's been recorded. Okay.
Okay. So, um, as I was saying, we will definitely not like achieve anything if I want to dive into all this aspect. It's a whole different thing on its own. So I will just move ahead, but I'm just letting you know that there's something called value added tax. And if your company is issuing it as part of your invoices, there has to be remittance to the government on this value added taxes. So next thing. So now I'm explaining in figures on how to calculate your tax as a fee, which I was saying in the beginning, if you go back to the slide here, here I explained, and now we will use figures to, to better portray the points that we made there. So let's say your total income was 25,000 euros, total expenses is 10,000 euros. Like I said, that's gross profit is total income minus total expenses. So you have a gross profit of 15,000 euros. So we're going to deduct social tax, which is 0.33%. And that gives us 4,950 euros. And I'm denoting this as M. It's just codification. M means nothing. I'm just identifying this figure as M so that in subsequent places, I don't have to write it out totally. I mean, that's an accounting stuff. So the balance you have is your 15,000 gross profit minus the Social tax calculated, 15,000 minus 4,950 gives us 10,050 euros. So less deductions. Like I said, these deductions are not, um, how do I say, it's not the same for everybody. So dependent children, tuition payment, and some other deductions there, it's not the same for everybody. And tax allowance, like I said, 500 by 12 if not used for other income during the year. So what this means, this tax allowance, if not used for other income during the year. So if you are a FA and you have another job, and on your job, you've been using the 500, let's say you work from January to June. And on that job, you've been using that 500 exemption. If you are going to file your tax as fear, you don't have that 500 by 12 anymore. What you have is 500 by six, because you have actually used it in the company that you worked for for the first six months. So in calculating your tax, your allowance will no longer be 500 by 12, because maybe you see another friend calculating his tax. I'm like, ah, how is your own uh, allowance 6,000 and my own is uh, 3,000. So basically you cannot use it twice. So depending on how many months you used it for other jobs, that's what allowance you have left. But we assume here that you did not use it in any way, and that's why it is 500 by 12, if not used for other income during the year. So tax after deduction is 20% of the income tax. So after all this, after this 10,050 euros, and we take away all the deductions, which I didn't put a figure because we don't know how much it will be. So I'm assuming that that figure is X. So tax after deduction, I put it to be 5,000. So that means all your deduction amounted to 5,000, 50 euros. So tax after all deductions, we have to calculate the income tax, which is 20% of the of this amount. So 20% of 5,000 gives us 1,000, which is which I denote as N. So your total tax for the year will be this M social tax, which is 4,950 plus the N, which we just calculated, which is 1,000. So your to social total tax will be paid will now be 5,950 euros. So um, back. So a lot of people now ask now, so what is this uh, tax refund and stuff? So as fear, you, you are mandated by the law to be paying some amount of social tax every quarter. You can decide to pay it every month, but it is 540 every quarter. That means you get an invoice in March, in June, in September, and one in December, 540 euros. So if this total social tax that we have here, this 4,950, oh, I keep putting it to the phone. If this 4,950, is less than what you paid to the government in that year. It means you will have to balance this money. But if all those social tax that you paid throughout the year is more than this money, that is when you will get a refund. I don't know if that is quite, that is quite clear. So what, is, what the old system does is that you are not actually going to wait till January and see that, oh, imagine that I have to pay this 6,000 euros to the government. It's such a big figure. And of course, it's going to be very difficult for individuals to pay it. So that's why the government asks you to pay 540 euros every quarter as fear. You can also pay this money monthly. You can even pay more than that. I will show you how to pay this money in the MTA page. So if what you paid in the year is more than what we calculated here, I you know that for us to calculate this, we have to know your total income for the year. That's why you don't get the tax refund during the tax year. But after the tax year, when the government is sure of the total income that you reported, then they know the total social tax that should be paid and then they see the one that you have paid. So if the one you've paid is higher than the one that you should pay, then you get a refund. But if the one that you should pay is higher than the one that you already paid, it means that you will have to pay that addition. That's why some people get invoices to pay more to their tax. Yes. Sorry, I have this boy tearing everything apart. 
So note, social tax is calculated as total social tax minus payment made in the accounting period. This is what I just explained, that your total social tax is not going to be as big as this because you've been paying. So what you've been paying will be deducted from this to give you what you will pay in, 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 in by October 1st as per the law. So, but I will open an empty page and we'll see how that works. I mean, for what you call it, for security purposes, I'm going to be using one that doesn't have uh, so much figures, personal, personal stuff. So here we have EMTA. The reason why I'm doing this is so that you can see from the page directly, because no matter how much I explain, if I don't use the interface, it might all look like, okay, um, so I don't really get what is this, what is that? So I'm just gonna try to log in and see. And you know that I won't be able to show you everything on the page because of course it's going to be recorded and broadcasted. So can't <laughs> let my um, you know tax record and stuff being out there. So this is my page actually. So I have a son, like I said, so this that's the name of my son. If I want to click on his page to do his tax, I can do it, which is the one I will use so that you can see how it works. So here for him, he's not working, he's not paying any taxes, he's not doing anything. And that's why you see that most of the figures are going to be on zeros. So income received in Estonia. So for, for somebody who is working, all these values will actually be imputed directly. Income received in Estonia here, you probably have 10,000 voluntary funded pension. Everything will be included personally already from the record because your employer is sharing every information with the tax board. And from all this information, you, it will ask you to declare business income. So if I have business income to declare, I will click yes. If I don't have, it's going to be on no. So let's assume that I have business income to declare. So if you are a fear now, all this place might also be zero because you did not receive any income that was sent to the tax board. So if you are a fear and you did not tell both food or Wolt or Yandex Taxi or whatever, organization you are working with to declare the figures to the tax board, most likely all this place might be in zeros. So you never worked and you never asked any company to declare your taxes. All the values here will be zero and you will be the one to click here that you want to declare business income. So we move forward that yes, I have business income to declare. And here, um, okay, yeah. So business income, here you, you can now impute the figure. So business income, business expenses, gains and losses from business abroad. So let's say I'm a fee now and I want to declare business income. It says here income from the sale of intermedi intermediation of goods and provision of services. You can put figures here. So let's say I earn 6,000 euros from direct sale. So if I'm a delivery guy now, so whatever figure both food pays me or what pays me, I will put it here. Rental income, did I rent my car to anybody? Yeah, I paid, the person paid me 150. So that's the royalties. Not everybody has that. Nobody, not everybody is using that. Moreover, in fear, I don't think there's anybody who is getting reality. So let's say now our total income is 6,150 euros as there. Also, there are also different kinds of income, market price of property taken into personal use, benefits of compensation received, blah, 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 blah. Like I said, I don't want to waste so much time. And here you have the business expenses. So your expenses, acquisition cost of fixed asset, if you bought a car, if you're a delivery person, if you bought the car, it's part of your expenses and you should put it here. But please be aware that when you're selling that car, you still have to pay the tax on the in, on the revenue you derive from that tax. So let's say, for example, you put here that I bought a car for 3,000. If in the next accounting period, I'm selling this car for 1,000, I will have to put that new 1,000, the, the 1,000 I'm selling it for, I will have to put it here in my business income for the sale of assets. I don't know if, see, market price of property taken into personal use, there should be sales of assets somewhere here. Other income, maybe you could put it under income. So let's say in the next tax year, I sold the car for 1,000. I'll have to come and put it here. So what it actually means that you've declared the, the car as an asset in the previous tax year, but in the next one, if you are selling it, you should bring the income for the car you sold here and put it on other income. Did you hear me? I think the, I I was muted. I don't know why. No, you're you are, you're online. Ah, we okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you sold the asset in the next year, you have to report it here. But let's just say that we just bought the asset, so you can put acquisition of fixed asset here, and all that expenses as it relates to you can also be listed. So if your expenses are like miscellaneous, internet and stuff, you can put them here. Five thousand euros. Hey. 5,000 euros here, and automatically the system calculates it itself. 
So just by saving it, uh, what is he saying? Error. Expenses more than the be... income. The expenses are more than the income. Ah, okay, that's why <laughs> I was just imputing the figures. So let me just put five hundred. Yeah. No, one second. I don't know, maybe because also there's no business for this account. But anyway, let's move on. I don't want to waste so much time. So once you put it already, the system calculates itself and shows you your business profit under here. So business profit under here is just basically calculating the total income minus the total expenses. And then we move forward. It calculates uh, the tax that you are supposed to pay. So for people, there are like other questions there that how can I pay my taxes even before it's issued? So on the tax board here, you have something here called prepayment. One second. I wish I would just use my own account. It's much easier for me than uh, one second. I think I'm I will. Sorry. Yeah. Is it possible for them to pause the recording so you use your account to demonstrate. Yeah, that would be fine. I just don't want to figure out. So if it's possible, they can do that. That would be fine. So they could pause the recording then when you're doctoring in your expenses. Did mm -hmm. you um, did you factor in the social taxes you were paying? Okay. Yeah, I got you. Thank you. Oh. Where is my slide? Femi, are you done with the presentation? No, no, no. It's just some one, one or two slide more, and then the yeah. So you can still see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. So we, so that's the explanation from my own personal account. And you see that it's pretty easy to calculate it just that you know what to add and what not to add. So uh, I think from there we went we straight to the questions. So I can go through this one, then we have questions from uh, in-house uh, people who are here. So how is tax calculated for employees? That we explained. Taxation for fear, that will explain. Tax related issues for OU, that we explained. And expectations to cover how to fight taxes for fear and how to lower your taxes. Uh, so now, how to lower your taxes? Uh, that's a pretty tricky question because lowering your taxes, I'm sure the person is asking within the law. How can you lower your taxes within the law? Don't earn so much money or have the chance to get so much deduction, so much deduction by having more children or probably undertaking courses and educational stuff or buy assets as well. But anyway, if you like, for example, if you buy assets, you are only pushing, you are lowering your taxes kind of because over time the asset is being used. It's still the company. So I, I wouldn't say there's one, one very legal way that you can like reduce your taxes per se, because if you buy assets, if you should sell the car again, you have to pay taxes for it. And I'm not sure that you want to just keep buying cars and cars, just buy them down because it's not useful. If you buy a car right now for 2,500 euros, if you will sell it back immediately for 2,500 euros, you have to report the money as an income. So that way it doesn't really reduce, you reduce your tax. So maybe have more children and stuff or have more dependent. But anyway, if you reduce your tax by having more dependents, you have to spend money on the children as well. So eventually you are reducing your tax and increasing your, your cost of living. So I, I don't think that this, maybe somebody might offer you a way to reduce your tax, but it always has a ratchet effect on your income and stuff as well. So less taxes, it raises your, your expenditure. So the only way to reduce your taxes is increase your expenses within the legal frame of your business. So it should be objective and informative. I mean, I won't decide that. Uh, get a clarity on the process of filing taxes and getting informed by the student tax system. So basically, like I said, it's very, very impossible. I'm trying to fit in so much information in so short a time. All everything that we've been saying, I could actually break them down and go deeply into it, but there is just no time for that. So this is basically an overview. I will also send some materials to the organizers that they can share. So there you can read yourself extensively about this tax structure and every point and every percentage and every deduction and, and stuff. So question one, how can independent contractors get their task obligation easily done without the asset that is currently experience i think the asshole is just that people don't know that it could be really simple so a lot of people has contacted me and i told them that to file your tax can easily be done by yourself all you need to do is how much did i earn how much was my expenses put all this together and put it into the system the system calculates itself the only thing that 
I think people can have problem with is if you want to have like a financial report, which nobody needs from you. You only need it when you are going to approach a bank for a loan. So if you as a fear needs a loan from a bank, they probably will ask you for your financial statement. So there they need you, the average monthly income, average expenses and all those kind of calculations. But the government doesn't need it. You don't need it per se, except you are taking up a loan. So that means all you need to do is just know your total income, know your total expenses, fill it in and the system calculates itself and you get the percentage. It's automatic, it's already pre pre-organized. So you, nothing is going to change about it. The percentage already done. And like I said, if you have any deduction, the government knows everything. The, all the information is shared with the tax board. If you go to school, have a dependent children, have a dependent relative and stuff living in Estonia, all these are already known by the government and it's pre-calculated. Yeah, Femi, um, one advice um, for those that want to know how to calculate or how to compute with their, uh, their income and expenses, they can mm -hmm. use a basic Excel to, with their bank statement, like in a spreadsheet form, maybe on a weekly, whatever money that they receive, they can put it on a spreadsheet. So at the end of the year, they can easily sum it and then get the total uh, income and then the total expenses. You know, some of them will be asking uh, with the computation of their income, how are they going to get their total income? How are they going to get their total expenses? So a basic Excel will do for them that if they use the basic Excel with, uh, with their bank statement, they can get all these things and then just put in into the, uh, the, the boxes. Yeah. So exactly, you're very correct. So that usually is the challenge. And for me as a business person over time, I just also try to reduce how I have like lingering figures. So for example, I had a contract with the gas company. So I usually use the card to buy gas, which is like the most recurrent expenditure for anybody who is doing career services. I mean, in another kind of service, it might be different. So gas would have been something I will buy daily or every two days and I will have to keep like tons of receipts. So but operating with the company, they send only invoice once a month. So all I need to do is just go to my email and you know search the name of the company and I have 12 invoices. So it's easy to calculate. So those kind of things, but if you operate a kind of fear that you have so much expenses, maybe like somebody is operating a food uh, business, you are buying and selling and buying a lot of things. I encourage you that on a daily basis, you can impute all these figures on an Excel sheet. And at the end of the year, you can easily calculate the total expenses and total income. Calculating total income is quite easy if you're operating with Wolf, boat, taxi, and stuff, because then you just check how much is being paid. But for somebody who is, let's say, selling food or selling uh, groceries and stuff, it means people pay you little money every now and then, and they come with different name and different description and stuff. So it's always good to maintain your record on a daily basis so that you don't get crowded at the end of the year if you are receiving money from different people that you cannot sieve out your bank statement. So that, just like you said, you can use basic Excel sheet to put those information on a daily basis so that it makes it easy for you at the end of the year when you are calculating this total income and total expenses. So question two, is my fear company allowed to pay some percentage of my rent? No, and yes. No, if the business that you are doing, primary business of registration of the fear is not connected to that rent. So I'm working with Walt and my business is Career services. There is none of the business working in that room. I cannot put that room as part of my rent. But if I'm a FIA and I'm operating cooking services, I'm cooking or I'm going to be renting out like children playground. So I'm renting a room and I furnished it and I'm renting it out for children playground. That room is the business. So rent of that business become expenses of the business. So if you will add your rent is subjected to what activity you are doing. Just as you cannot add that, oh, I bought coffee and I'm doing taxi driver. T coffee is not directly related to your business. So you could, coffee doesn't make the car move. It doesn't make the business go. It's just your personal expenditure, even though you took the coffee while working. So it's the same as rent that even though you are living in the house while you are operating the fear, but that rent is not directly related to the business that you are carrying out. So you cannot add it. So it depends on whatever business that you are doing. If the business is not operating in that space, you cannot put it as an expenses in your fear. So please, as a company, tell me how to declare my taxes. I think that's all we've been going through. And like I showed you, my own personal uh, account uh, in EMTA and I showed you how easy it is to file taxes actually. So is it possible to pay monthly as a company rather than paying yearly? Yeah, absolutely. And you, you could pay monthly even 
whatever fees. So under the MCHA, there's something they call prepayment. So there's a prepayment account. You can always go there. If you, do, if you want to be paying 10, 10 euros daily, you can do that. If you want to pay 50, 50 euros weekly, you can do that. So you can actually pay this money in advance. And when your tax is calculated, it's automatically taken from the prepayment. And probably if you have uh, more money there, it will still remain as a prepayment. And if you have less, you just have to balance that money. And it's also the same as paying that 540 every quarter, that, like I said, which you can also split and make it monthly payment. So does an individual registered as a company get tax refund? Yes. Like we went through my account, you saw that I got a tax refund of 104 euros. So you can get tax refund, but usually based on my experience, you don't get that kind of tax refund. Like people get like 900, 1000 and stuff. You really don't get such amount of money. So how can an individual manage the account of their company without an account manager? So just like we said a couple of minutes ago, you can manage your account depending on the activity you do, how sophisticated it is, and how many miscellaneous income and expenses you have. So the more you have, the more difficult it becomes. And for you to handle it properly, if you, if you are the kind of person who deals with buying and selling on a daily basis, then you need to organize your account on a daily basis. Then it makes it easier for you. But as I know that most people who do fear are operating career services and taxi, that is quite easy to do because you can pretty much identify the organizations that you deal with and it's easy to see your bank statement of such figures. So even gas, you use your bank card to buy gas, you can see without Olerex on Sekuke and you see how much you spent in Sekuke in the entire year. So it's possible, it's so easy to do that. But if you do activities that are not as flexible as that, cooking, groceries and stuff, or you offer cleaning services that you get paid from different names at different times, then it's better to maintain your account on a daily basis or weekly basis. For weekly basis, you can just have like a rough template on your notepad where you put, okay, today, Monday, I offered cleaning at LVDT 112, apartment 47, I got 25 euros. Just put it on note. At the end of the week, you can do a calculation of total income, total expenses, and that becomes that weekly report. So in the year, you can simply use Excel sheet to file a summary of those kind of things. So question. I started doing boat delivery with an entrepreneur account where 20% is sent directly to the government. I later opened a fear company as well, changed my bank. So as best in my knowledge, boat doesn't pay for anybody because boat doesn't operate company and uh, individual person. So boat pays you the same for company and pays you the same for natural person. For those who don't know what that is, if you're doing Volt, you could choose to be a natural person or choose to be a company. But Volt doesn't have that operation. So I'm not sure that Volt is paying any 20%. Um, but I'm not sure that Volt is paying any 20% for any entrepreneur in Estonia, as far as I know. So I don't think Volt pays this 20%. So I later opened a fear company as well as change my bank. Now this is a little bit complicated. You change your bank doesn't still mean anything. All you have to do is take your total expenses, total income. Like I said, both is not paying any 20% to the best of my knowledge. Uh, for uh, uh, Fabric, so just, a, just a moment. Entrepreneurship account is a special account operated by LHB. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you use that and already linked to your world of both accounts, Mm -hmm. Now, once you're receiving money from both, the bank mm -hmm. automatically takes 20% and sends to the government. Ah, okay, now I understand. Yeah, now yeah. I understand. Yeah. I was treating okay. that entrepreneur account as a normal fee. Now I understand. Yeah. yeah. This is just done also to help people able to, like, you know, adjust to the tax, but so that it doesn't, like, uh, get you choked up when you get all the money and then you need to pay it out. Now I understand. So I later opened a fear company as well, changed my bank. So all this person needs to do is to find out from the day you opened your fear, what are your income and expenses, and then you report it in that period. So that's exactly what the person needs to do. So I later open a fear from the particular date you open it, what are your income and expenditures on the fear and you will report it accordingly. It's just going to be for the year as well. It won't be for that period, but you know that, okay, all the money you are reporting was from June to December 31st. So it, the person just needs to report it as, as, as every other person will report their own. And then they don't have to take into consideration this amount that they already pay 20% on in paying their income tax. How do I file my tax? That's what I explained. How do I declare my expenses? It's the same. So, and also you need to realize that if you're not operating a fear, then you don't have the access of taking away your expenses. 
So if I'm operating, let's say now I don't have a fear, I'm working with Bolt and all I'm paying is a 20% income tax on my income. I cannot take away my expenses. That's why they are already charging the 20% on your income. So you cannot use the expenses in that period to cover for the fear. So for this person now, let's say he opened the fear in June. Before June, he's been doing the same business and accumulating fuel costs, repair of car, whatever. This person cannot declare those expenses under the fear. Because at that point, he is paying 20% on total income, which you shouldn't have been paying on total income. His 20% should have been after taking expenses. But because he wasn't operating at the fear and he didn't have the chance to take these expenses away, he cannot push the expenses to the fear period. So all expenses and income will be accounted for in the period of the fear till the end of the year. So that's how the person will have to treat that expenses in this particular case. So do I declare all the expenses incurred during the year, even before I registered as a company, or do I begin with expenses from when the company registered? This is just what we explain now that you can only declare the, inc the expenses when you started functioning as a company, because that is what the company offers you, that you are able to take away your expenses before paying your taxes. So if there's any question in the house, I think that's all for for the questions that were sent in the yes, form. Thank you very much um, for the highlights that you've given to us. Um, we have some questions on the chat and I want you to address them so that those that have sent their question will feel okay. Uh, from it, it said, when I registered with Booth, I registered as a natural person and later went ahead to open a sole proprietor company, but I didn't change my contract with Booth. Can I still do that expense when declaring tax? So it's pretty much the same as we'll explain now. So this person was operating as a natural person. So if you want to file the tax correctly, you will, that's your natural person that you, income you got, you will pay the taxes on it without taking expenses. So let's say this person earned uh, 2,000 euros at that time. So you are going to pay your 20% on 2,000 euros which is 20% uh, of 1,000 euros should be 400 euros. So after that period, the person now earns 10,000 euros as fee. So your 10,000 euros now, you calculate the expenses, yes, it was 4,000 euros expenses. So 10,000 minus 4,000 expenses gives you 6,000 euros. So it's on those 6,000 that you now pay the tax, then whatever you're paying on that 6,000, you now add it to the tax you were, you were supposed to pay on the 2,000, now becomes your total tax. The major difference is just that you cannot include your expenses if you are not functioning as fee. So that's exactly what the calculation will look like. How much percentage of tuition fee should be added? It's not you that has it. It's it's the, it's already pre-filled already. Do you understand? So you get any refund from a tuition fee that we paid? It's going to be a refund if all the figures are now more than your income. Do you understand? It's a deduction. So the amount of deduction as related to your income is what determines if you get a refund or not. Okay. So for I paid a, I paid a tuition of one thousand eight, but I'm declaring an income of twenty seven thousand euros. It's way more. So yeah. that Hello, can, I, can I ask uh, that uh, tuition fee again because I didn't get it clear. Uh, let's say that it was not uh, pre-filled, and you have to do it yourself. Do you just put everything that you paid? in the decision fee for the year or do you take a, a particular percentage so actually there is i don't know of any circumstances that it will not be previewed because it's actually something that the, the school itself will have to report they are mandated because that money is an income unto them so they must report it so there is no way you won't find it there so yeah the let me come in one minute it's showing me on my um, data because i have like kids that goes to school so from my page i'm seeing all the tuition um, school fees are paid for my daughter and the training also the external extra um, curriculum activities that I paid for is showing under my expenses. Mm -hmm. So the reason why it will show that because those people are also reporting that as an income to them is money that came in. So they are reporting it that this person with this code number has paid 3000 euros as tuition. So it's money good. So it's a system. The whole thing functions together. So there is no way they would have reported as an income and it will not reflect on your own side as an expense. Hello. Uh, yeah. Maybe I just add a little for, uh, concerning the, the the training fee or the tuition fee. Mm -hmm. What I understand is that if you are so if your school fee is say maybe five thousand, and mm -hmm. in twenty twenty you pay one thousand eight hundred, mm -hmm. it means that one thousand eight hundred will be deducted for twenty twenty. 
the balance yeah. will be in the maybe in 2021 when you eventually pay yeah every payment is about the year so it's yeah. just like income and expenses too so if even if your school fees will be twenty thousand, whatever payment you made in that accounting period is what will be taken into account so if you it, it doesn't like okay because the tuition fees is five thousand you will not meet five thousand it's the payment actually so it's in basic accounting we call it money received and money paid so that's what we, the accounting procedure takes care of. It doesn't take care of the commitment. So the commitment is 5,000 euros as tuition fees, but actual payment is 1,800. So 1,800 is the exchange of value between the school and you. That's what you will see there. Because actually you might not pay the old tuition at the end of the day, you might relinquish the program or whatever. So of course the tax board will not take cognizance of the amount of tuition because actually it's not being paid in total. So if you split your payment of tuition fees into three years, four years, whatever, you would only meet the figure that was paid in the accounting period on that review. So I hope uh, that- The next possible. question is, if I use, if you use your home and your home internet as your office environment, how much percentage of your rent can you add in your company's <coughs> expense? Is there any percentage range? So like I said, it's all about relative activity. If you operate as World or both Korea, your rent is not part of your business. But if you are doing, let's say, home cooking, yeah. of course, that is the space. You can actually take the entire rent away. In as much as that space is your business, that becomes a rental for your business. It doesn't matter that you are also living there. Because anyway, you could go and rent a place in Old Town and actually put a bed behind it, which maybe is not allowed by law, but you could actually use it. So it's all about how relative is that expenses to your income? Like, which I was also explaining that you, while working as a career, for example, you actually buy food, you buy coffee, you, and you're on the job. So, but you can't put all this money there because they are not related to the business. So that's exactly how it is it's about the relativeness to what you are doing. So what is the fear and what is the activity that you are doing? And is that space one of the things you need for the business? If it is, then you have to take the rent. No, okay. Of if the activities you are doing does not relate with what you registered for, what you used to register the company. Like, for instance, you registered your company as, like, uh, you are into Korea, that's the mm -hmm. activity. But, like me now, later on, I like had a, another side also cooking. So, in that case, what how do you declare the taxes? Do you declare all your income on cooking as well? Sorry, so like, I, I mean, are you operating? I are you what, you didn't hear that one. Is it what I mean? all your income on cooking? Cooking as part of your fear. Are you operating that cooking? So that means when you are reporting your taxes, do you record your income on cooking as part of your income on your taxes as well? I'm just, I'm still asking because I've not done it. Yeah, reason being that in as much as you will report all your income on cooking, the expenses on the activity of cooking should also be reported. I don't oh, know if noted, you quite get that. Noted. Yeah, no mm -hmm. Thank you. So for example, now let's say, like I was saying, let's say I'm operating with world. I'm using that because I'm more conversant with it and I have a car. I decided to buy another car. So I bought another car. I put it there, purchase of fixed asset. Let's say 2,000 euros. I now rent that car out. So I'm renting the car out now. It's not now part of the career services that I'm offering. But I'm putting the cost of the car that I bought as part of my expenses. And any income on that car in form of rent will also have to be added to my income. But if I bought that second car and I put, give it to my wife, mm -hmm. it's not more part of the business. And, it's, and it's not, I'm not reporting anything. So my wife is using this car. She's going about her daily business. I'm not recording anything that comes in for the use of the car. So it's, it's not possible for me to put the car as part of the asset of the company. So it's basically relating your income and expenses in any activity that you do. So if you purchase an asset or you are paying for a particular space, if it's not related to incomes that you are, that are going to report, then you cannot use it. So for example, if there's any case where you are invited by the tax board to explain yourself, explain the figures, and that, then you have to do a breakdown of what made up your 25,000 euros income, that it's payment from this, from this, from this, from this, from this. 
So as somebody who is doing courier service and offering like cooking food, so if you are asked to explain how you came by 25,000 euros, okay, oh, what pay me 10,000 or oh, both food pay me 2,000 oh, and this group of people are people who patronize me on my food, you give a whole like, account statement of all the income and they paid for this food. Definitely since you got money from there, you can report the space that you use for that activity as an expenses because if you didn't have it, there's no way you can carry out the business anyways. Yeah, I think she's clear with that. Can one run sole proprietorship and side business and have different exemption as an individual and then for the company as well? I didn't really get the question. If I'm running a sole proprietorship and then mm -hmm. I have a side business, mm -hmm. and there's, do I have different exemption from the individual and then from the company? You are running a sole proprietorship and you have a side business. What side business? Um, is that, I mean, there has to be let, a framework let's say, for the side let's business. Say, let's, say, let's say you have a, you are a sole proprietor and then you're doing cleaning job as well, part-time cleaning as well. Mm -hmm. So you're doing that cleaning as a natural person, mm -hmm. but then you have, you have a sole proprietor, so you're an, maybe an, an FIE. Mm -hmm. So now you're running your, your normal taxi. Your, mm -hmm. So now can you take exemption for the side hustle, like the part-time cleaning, can you apply for exemption? Yeah, yeah, that's what we discussed in the beginning, that you can apply for exemption in as much as the money is more than the minimum wage. So your exemption is 500, minimum wage is 525, if I'm correct, or 524. So you can use the 500, but you know, like I said, you cannot use the 500 for that uh, job and use it for your fear. It's not going to work. You only have 500 for a month. So if you use it for that cleaning job for the all of the year, it means at the end of the day, you don't get the 6,000 allowance on somebody who operated fear all of the year. I don't know if that's clear. Yeah, I think it's clear. Yeah. Yeah. Someone who is asking, I, he bought a bicycle, I think for delivery from a friend or from an individual. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no receipt. He doesn't have a receipt, but there is only a bank transaction. Can he deduct that as an expense? Yeah, actually, if there's no receipt, but there's a bank transaction, that's already an evidence. So all the tax board needs to see as an evidence for that transaction, if eventually you ask to, you know, come around and explain. It doesn't happen always, but for any reason, if there's some irregularities and they want to, like, see, then it, that transaction becomes an evidence of payment for the, but eventually the explanation will also come into play. So it means that I sent money to XYZ and I put it there that gift. So how do I want to now later say that, oh, this money was used to buy a bicycle? Oh. So if you are doing such a thing, it has to come in the explanation, payment for bicycle. Okay. So that represents the transaction. Okay. That does mean that we have to keep a receipt of everything that we do relating to business that we, we are into. Yeah, you have to keep it for a period of five years. For a period of five years. Yeah. I actually have a big bag of all my receipts from the day I started doing the business. So you have to keep it there. You, usually the, the lawyers or the accountants will say keep it for one year, but just keep it somewhere in case of anything. Anything could happen in the future and they need some appropriation and they invite you over, you always have these uh, receipts there. So what I do is just I pack them neatly in each bag. So my expenses in 2018, there's a label on the bag, 2018 expenses, all the receipts is there, everything. I already have them in an Excel sheet of the figures and everything of the breakdown personally. But for evidences, I put them in different bags and I store them. It doesn't take a lot of space. Just keep them neatly. I have worked with both. I was doing a delivery since uh, 2019. I've not paid my tax or I've not filed for any tax. And then in 2020, it's not on and off. Something like it's not a straightforward. And then in 2022, I did the same thing. I didn't file, I didn't pay any tax. In 2021, I want to file and then pay my tax. Are there any implications? Uh, in the beginning, I would say, according to like best of my knowledge, is that if you now file everything together, if there will be implications like an invite, like, oh, we see that you earned this money in 2019, you can now declare that, oh, yeah, I didn't know how to do it then, but all the figures from this time, were actually computed together to file this particular one. And if you show evidences for it, I'm sure you'll be fine. But if the invitation comes and you never filed any tax, then it becomes an offense of tax evasion. Will I, will I be fined uh, in 2021 if I'm now filing for 
my tax from previous years, from 2019, 2020, and now? To the best of my knowledge, like I said, because this is one black hole in Estonia, like usually these kind of informations are very, uh, what, what can I use? Like you, you really don't get to know what the statutory requirements will be until you are in that scenario. But to the best of my knowledge, I feel that if you've not been contacted on such issue and you declare all the taxes, even if there will be a new contact that, oh, we see that there was an income in this year undeclared and you can prove that all the income from that period to the present period have been accounted for and your tax in that period has been paid or has been issued, which you could be like paying 1st of October or do some you know, instrumental payment, then you should be fine. Because anyway, you've declared all this figure and you are going to pay them or you have paid them. Uh, please, maybe I just, uh, I could add a little bit. Uh, just to say that uh, as he rightly said, rightly said, tax evasion is a crime. And if they say they declare taxes yearly, it's always good that we declare those taxes. Because once you don't declare your taxes, it might be considered as tax evasion, which uh, might lead you to trouble. Yeah. yeah. It's better to use, uh, play with the law. Tax avoidance is not a crime, but tax evasion is a crime. Just try to play taxes every year. Try as much as possible to declare it yearly. Otherwise, it might lead you to trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I need to back you there. Some time ago, I boarded a taxi uh, which was driven by one of the Bangladeshians. So it was like, we, we as we conversed, it, it made me realize that there were actually three that applied for long-term permit. And unfortunately, it was the only one that got granted because other people had evaded tax the previous year. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we should always like be careful when we are declaring this. We should be sincere. When we are declaring yeah. our taxes. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the, 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 yeah, everybody is quite right. I mean, under normal condition, the taxes to be declared early, and this should be done that way for, for you to avoid any trouble. And anyway, also declaring a good tax is also good for you in terms of financial uh, uh, strength. So you could get loans and stuff. I personally, I, I've, I've applied for tens of thousands of loans in euros, and I get it really, because they see the figures, they see what you're paying, they see the income and they, they are ready to grant it so a lot of people don't know that if you are being honest with the tax it also helps you in getting loans from banks like you get good figures of course that's that becomes a decision with the bank in relation to your permit and stuff but it's also good that when when you have a good tax uh, structure it helps in you getting loans and and all this kind of stuff another question that one is asking but it's, it's not that clear if i pay a tuition fee but the, the school is not in estonia as you mean, currently I'm studying in Taltec and I'm running a program in maybe uh, Austria and I pay a fees over there. Will it be deducted from, uh, will it be deducted? Is it, is it allowable? Mm, to be honest, I really don't know the provision for foreign tuition and education payment. I don't know per se because I have not dealt with it. So I'm not so sure 100% about how to answer that. And I don't want to give the wrong information. I've not dealt with any situation of people paying tuition uh, outside Estonia. But I think in the little studies of business and taxes in Estonia, I think the consideration we now even have to come by is the school in the EU or not. So I don't know. I'm just, that's just what I think will be. So it depends on where that money is paid. Is it also in the EU or it's outside the EU? So I, that, that is another extensive thing entirely. I might probably have to look at that myself. And if I find something meaningful, I can reach out to Asi and they can you know, push it to the appropriate person. But right now, I've never dealt with that, that scenario and I don't know about it. As you mean before, I want to buy a car, I want to do a delivery service. And uh, you know, before buying the car, I incurred some expenses before acquiring the car. After acquiring the car and I register for delivery, can I deduct those expenses or can I add those expenses to my expenses? What expenses before acquiring the car? What expenses do you mean? Uh, that's a question. Like uh, calling the person, communication, um, uh, verifying the car, sending somebody to test the car. Uh, so the, a whole the, lot the, of things uh, in connection question, with the car. The question would be, how would you ascertain that expenses? Who use the invoices? Because anyway, you are allowed to take away your phone bill as a fear person, you remember? So if you are taking away your phone bill, then if you are going to take away the cost of call, that means you are double charging the government. So 
And if you send a friend to go there, there's a friend issuing you an invoice for the payment of that service. If the person is, then it becomes your expenses. So if you are using a third party service like uh, vehicle check and uh, examination, in as much as the person is issuing you an invoice for that business transaction, then it becomes a, an expense for the company. But if it's just a mutual kind of thing that, hey, uh, please help me go and check, the, 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 you can't report that as, as business expenses. Yeah, because there is no there is no structured way of ascertaining the value of that transaction. Okay, so um, can it, I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Um, talking about what he just asked, what if the car you got is what you used in doing the business, the FIA, but you got the car way before you registered the FIA? Okay, so this is the situation. You re you got the car and now you start the FIA. So even though the car is yours, I will advise that that accounting year, put the cost of the car as part of your, the stuff I showed you, like purchase of fixed asset. So you can put the cost of the car there. But like I said, you have to know that if you put the cost of the car as a purchase of fixed asset, you will need to come and tell the tax board again, what eventually happens to that car. Did you sell it? If you sold it, you will have to report the, 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 cost of the sale as income now. So two things are involved. If you put the car as purchase of fixed asset right now, you will need to put the income if you resell it. If you don't put it now, you can sell off, sell off your car at any time and you don't need to pay tax on any money you get back from it. Okay, I don't know if that's clear. Okay, hold on. But what of if you have gotten the car before you register as a company? Yeah, it doesn't mean you can, it's simply meaning you are, you are transferring the car under the activities of the company. So just put the value. Okay, what if the car now, like the, you didn't sell the car, you just went to dump it somewhere because the car um, engine fault or um, gear problem. You have to show evidence. You don't just dump your car anywhere now. The worst you can sell it as crap. As, as you, mean, no, you just give it to somebody as a gift. You give it to somebody as a gift. You have to exchange, put the value. You can't just dash that because if the system allows that, nobody will be, will be adding the income on that item. So if you are going to give it as a gift, you have to calculate the value of that asset at the time you are giving it as a gift. Because that's your own decision. You know that that, as, that asset is, has been declared as a purchase for the company, for the business. So you cannot, you cannot just dash it out and like that. The, in the principles of accounting, you know, there's like for every debit entry, there must be a corresponding credit entry. So if I bought a car for 3,000 euros, if I'm going to give it as a gift, and at the time I'm giving that a gift is what 1,000. On that normal credit and debit entry in accounting, so 1,000 as gift, but there's 2,000 as depreciation value, wear and tear, so yeah. for, for the books to balance. So the asset cannot just disappear. So if you want to report the tax properly, the asset cannot just disappear. If you give it as a gift, you have to put in the value of that asset at that time that you're giving it as a gift. Even though you didn't take the money, it's left for you. You made the decision to give it as a gift. Um, we said one hour, but we've exhausted more than one hour. I want to find out if uh, we have questions, and if there is no questions, we will thank our resource person for coming. Uh, if he will, we will drop a, a link if your questions has not been answered, or you have a peculiar question that you want it to be answered, you can just forward the questions to us, and then we'll answer all your questions. How can I close uh, my FIE? How can I close? Yes. Yeah, because that's is one of the easiest things. Just logging back to the rick.ee, which is the portal where you registered it, and you will see like deleting entry. So you just click on it, delete entry, sign with your ID card or smart ID, and in less than 24 hours, you will get an email that confirms that your entry has been deleted from the company's uh, register. So just sign it back to rick.ee and fix it from there. So if I'm expecting a refund and my refund uh, calculation, per my calculation, I've worked with like two or three companies and uh, I'm in the 500 bracket or mm -hmm. about 500. Um, is there any calculation or is there any mass that I need to do before I get my refund? I'm not sure I understand the question. I've worked with two or three companies. Okay. 
Yes, and I do pay tax some that I've, uh, I've given them my exempt letter not mm -hmm. to tax me, and then some mm -hmm. that I've asked them to tax me. Is there any mass apart from this? Is there any mass or any calculation that we need to know for the computation of our tax refund? So first, like I said, you can only use the exemption in one place. So even if you have 10 employers paying you in a month, you can only use the exemption in one single place. So and you will use one single place, yeah. And you will use the exemption in the place that pays you over the minimum wage. So like I was explaining, if you are working with five employers, one pays you 600, another pays you 300, another pays you 250, you will use the exemption on the one that pays you 600 because it is more than the minimum wage. So there's really not so much calculation to do. So every other one, they charge you your income tax already on the, whatever they are supposed to pay you. Please, I have a, a quick one. Yeah. Um, if someone works like do another job and you do the FIE, on your other job, it's a contract job where they pay your social tax. Do I have to pay for the FIE too? No. No invoice okay, is sent to you. You won't be paying the social tax on the FIE. Okay. But then mind also, you, but mind you, mind you, when you finally want to calculate all the figures, so that that FIE, you won't be paying the social tax on monthly basis, like somebody who is running it only. One second, I have to just open the door. Just one second, sorry. Okay. As he's going to open the door, if you have a question, you can drop it because we have three minutes to wrap up for this uh, series. Um, if you have any questions, yeah, no sorry, question, yeah, I'm actually uh, taking more than the time allocated for our resource um, person. Yeah. Okay, so, so what, what can happen is that please, is, if it's possible to drop all the questions, I will respond it by typing and we can give it to the person because I actually allocated the time for this event and now my <laughs> attention is needed for something else i'm yeah. really deeply sorry i wish i could stay for a longer period okay so if you can finish with edit we have only two minutes so if you can finish with edit then uh we wrap up of, of yeah so what was the question again sorry well, i asked if i have another job a contract job where my social tax has been paid mm -hmm. do i have to pay social tax for the fie and secondly if the other job i don't use the 500 tax exemption mm -hmm. I will have to use it for, and I want to use it for the FIE. It's okay, right? Yeah, sure. So you will have to pay the social tax, but unlike people who are strictly operating the fee and they have to pay that every quarter or every monthly, you won't have to do that. Because you know that social tax is the one responsible for your free medical services and all those government services you enjoy. But at the end of the year, when you are declaring your income, they will now calculate the social tax on your total income. But you won't just have to pay it every week or every month or quarterly as somebody who is strictly operating the fee. So what will now be done is that, let's say you earn 3,000 euros from the job that you did, and you earn 10,000 euros from your fee, which makes your income 13,000 euros. Whatever social tax has been paid by your employer will be deducted from the total social tax that you are supposed to pay on all those entire figure. Okay. So then you will pay the balance. Okay. You understand okay. the point now? So if I was earning from my employer 550, the social tax they are paying on 550 is different from the social tax they are paying on an income of 1.5. So yeah. that means that the total social tax paid by the employer minus the total social tax on your total income will now be the social tax that you will pay. Okay. Yeah. So I'm so, sorry. So I, which, I which means which means there's no escape in pay, in paying accurate social tax. I no, mean, no, 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 no. Because there's 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 this idea that hold your other job very tightly, don't leave because they pay your social tax, but at the same time you're making another other money again. You will you will still pay that money. You will still have to pay. Yeah, you okay. will still have to pay. All that. right, uh, Femi, yeah. we are indeed grateful. Alan, thank you, Femi. You've been wonderful. Yeah. We are receiving a lot of messages that you're awesome. I mean, I I wasn't expecting this package, but I was. I mean, did say I'm, I'm very much. Uh, uh, I, I feel so happy and I, I believe I have learned, we've learned a lot. So when well, did thank you. Thank you for taking much of your time, Alan. You're welcome. You. And apologies that I have to run because yeah, the time Alan was is like still, strictly allocated. Alan is still, yeah. 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 Thank you thank so you, much. Thank you, Femi. So uh, we'll send the link to our members and then any question that pop up, we'll just forward it to you so that you answer it and then we'll send the feedback to them.
Yeah, absolutely. Once again, guys, thank you very much for today's series. And uh, we hope next month we'll bring another interesting topic to your doorsteps. Thank you, Femi, and then thank you to yeah. our members. Yeah, thank you so much, and uh, have a lovely evening. Mega Mist. Mega Mist.